Thank you for joining. My name is Christoph Reichert from CBR Technology. We are Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central Partner in California, headquartered in Huntington Beach with a satellite office in San Francisco. Today I would like to go over the manufacturing module of Business Central and essential capabilities for both discrete and process manufacturing organizations. The Business Central product is offered in two different versions. One is Essentials and the other is called Premium. The premium edition is the one that includes the manufacturing module. If you currently subscribe to the essentials, you can upgrade to premium, which will then add the manufacturing module to your set of available software tools. Once you do the addition of the product, you'll have, in addition to your item master, the ability to track bill of materials as well as routing steps to go through. So in the manufacturing module, unlike the assembly process, which does not have routing steps, you will get the ability to create bill of materials as well as routing procedures. These routing procedures can be item specific or they can be a template that is being used by multiple items at once. Routing procedures or steps are then separated by work center, machine centers, which go through specific steps and procedures you have to go through in order to manufacture the item. You can also add quality control or quality measures to the tracking of data and tools that are being used for this process as well. What's important to note is that both the bill of material and the routing submodule essentially now contains ECM or engineering change management capabilities. So you can do revision or version tracking on these bill of materials and routing steps. This will allow you to keep track of the changes made to either the bill of materials or the routing steps over a period of time and go back through the system to keep track of when what was changed to what part of the version tracking in the tool. After the actual setup of the item and production and routing steps, which we'll go through here in just a moment in the live system, you then have the ability to create actual production orders. Production orders can go through various stages starting with a simulated production order, which can then be turned into a planned, firmly planned, and finally a released production order. Quite important to point out is that you do not have to go through this process. You can go directly to a released production order if you're doing it manually. If you're using the system to generate a production order for you on behalf of demand planning or sales forecast information, you can start with a firmly planned and then release it as part of the production management tool as well. Once you have a released production order, you then can track consumption journals for the raw materials and output journals for the finished goods, a new journal called a production journal, which will combine the two for future reference. Having set this brief example of how things can work in the module, I'd like to start showing you the setup and the production order process in the live product. So now we are in the business central environment, which is a sample company called Kronos USA. Everything you're looking at is fictitious data. I've added a couple of items to the actual database as well as configured the manufacturing module in the standard Kronos USA company. That will not be the case. So you won't necessarily be able to follow along on this demo in your own environment just because these changes have been made. Also, as I mentioned before, this is now in the premium uh, subscription account from Microsoft, no longer essential. So a lot of the things or all of the things just about that I'm about to show you are not part of the standard product. Still, we're looking at 100% Microsoft. This is nothing third party that has been added to it. This is just adding some capabilities, specifically manufacturing, service order management, and warehouse management will be added if you subscribe to the premium account versus the essentials. I've also changed my profile to be a production manager. So as a production manager, you don't care about GL and banking and all the other things in life. So here you just have production order management related tasks. Again, production orders, you could have sales transactions you're part of. You can have journal entries, worksheets, product design issues, such as production bill of material and routing steps you're setting up and configuring, as well as capacity planning for your work centers and machine centers. So that's all part of the production management profile. 
instead of looking at it in this menu structure, you can click in this summary page, which is uh, giving you a overall uh, review of these areas in a single page that you can navigate through rather quickly and easily. As we said before, I'm going to start through, go through the setup of the items before I go through an actual transaction so that you can kind of get the sense for what you can do in this product. So I'm going to go and start off with the basic item setup. In my particular example here, I've added a number of items to the core Kronos USA database just to illustrate the capabilities of the manufacturing module specifically added three raw materials in different unit of measures, liquids, solids, and things of that nature. But I also added a finished good, which you can see here. Obviously, this is all fictitious information. When you're setting up raw materials, you can have the ability to track your raw materials in different unit of measures. This particular item is used internally from a milliliter perspective, but when we purchase it from the manufacturer of the raw material, we buy it in liters and this conversion of liters to milliliters, for example, is built into the tool. Now, once you have the item uh, set up as far as the raw material, you can tell the system how you're buying it, in this case, purchasing it, how many days on average it, get, it takes to get to you, what vendor you're purchasing it from, vendor item number and how you purchase it. And that will also be considered when you run the order planning worksheets for or requisition worksheets for your raw materials. Also, you can indicate whether or not this item is a critical item, if there's safety stock and things of that nature for the raw material as well. Of course, the software has inventory forecasting capabilities and that can come into quite handy when you're doing a seasonal, seasonal items. Uh, both on the raw as well as the finished good level and that will roll through the planning tool as part of the forecasting mechanism in the software as well. Also, uh, you can track lot numbers for both the raw materials and the uh, finished goods and of course serial numbers as well. And of course you can mingle the two between different items. So some items can be tracked with lot numbers, some with serial numbers and others with nothing. And you can simply turn that on or off on an item by item basis. Now this is my raw material. I'm going to take a quick peek at my finished good. The finished good is um, of course the actual item I'm manufacturing and of course the system does do some multiple levels of bill of materials so if you're doing sub-assemblies and things of that nature you can easily do that. Now in this case here the difference is that in the replenishment system indicator that I've looked at before this particular item is set to production order. The system can handle replenishment in three different ways, purchasing it through a purchase order, producing it with a manufacturing production order, or assembling it with an assembly order. And of course, you can mingle all three of them for any given items. And of course, even if an item is set up to production order or assembly order, you can still purchase it if you have a mixed environment where sometimes you build, sometimes you purchase particular items. On the production order side, you can also decide whether or not the item is made to stock or made to order, and if what routing steps and production bill of material steps you go through to do that. It's interesting to note is you can set up routing steps and templates. So if you have routing steps that are identical for many different items, you don't have to set up a different routing number for each item, but you just create a single template like I did here that all your items have to go through in order to be produced. In addition to the basic setup that you already see here, the software also now offers a somewhat new feature called item attributes, where you can assign additional properties or attributes to a given item. This is useful for both raw materials as well as finished goods. But you can set up the attributes and their values for each item. And as you do a transaction, you can search your item database by these attributes rather than the item number or description of the item. So it greatly in enhances the search and find capabilities in the software by using item attributes. When we're looking at routing numbers, routing numbers, as I mentioned before, are specific to uh, either one item alone or they can be you know, utilized as a template for many different items. When I go into the setup of this particular item, You'll notice that I have the ability to create routing steps that the product will go through. These routing steps can then be tied to capacity planning. 
This is done through configuring setup times, run times, wait times, move times, things of that nature. And as I mentioned in my introductory slide, you can also have version tracking or revision tracking on the routing steps. So in this particular example, I turned this feature off, but in the version number tracking here, you would be able to go through various versions of this. Each routing as well as bill of material process can go through certification process, and this certification process would trigger the version increment. When you go through uh, the routing steps in here, you can do version tracking and see that. You can also see where used, so which items are using this particular template. It can be all done from here. If you do want to copy this routing step for a new item template that is almost identical to this, but you don't want to rekey everything, you can do that with the basic copy feature. Also, in the production bill of material, you have the ability to, of course, you know, indicate the raw materials that are needed to make this finished good itself. And this is also a um, configuration where you can track certification status of the individual bill of material and version tracking here as well. Important to note is that, of course, the item doesn't just have to be an item, but it can also be another production bill of material. So if you do a sub-assembly type multi-layer bill of material setup, you can certainly do that here as well. On the production bill of material, you also have the ability to track to track quantities that you need, and these serve as a default, which you can then, of course, overwrite in the actual consumption journal. So just because in your bill of material you have these quantities per as a default, you can overwrite them in the consumption journal with the actual value observed for that particular production run. So these are a couple of the setups that you want to go through. I've done all of this already for this sample item. And uh, when you create a sales order in the system for the finished good, you can then drive the consumption needs or the sales demand needs in the order planning worksheet. I'll go through that in just a moment. But to show you here is I've created a sales order for this item. So if I click on here, as you can see here, I have five units that I've already taken an order for. This could be an individual sales order or it could be multiple orders as well. In this case, it's just a single order. And of course, from here, you can easily drill down onto the detail of that particular sales transaction. So this case here is a sample customer adapting corporation and they're needing five units on this main location of this finished good. And this is my source document for the planning worksheet, which I'll be showing you here in just a second. So the sales order is has been created, but now I'm looking to figure out demand based on the sales order. So in the product, there is a order planning worksheet. So I'm gonna show you that real quick. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you is how you can navigate throughout the system. You can go from the menu, you can go from the pull down menu, or you can just type in in the search command what it is you're looking for. I'm looking for the order planning worksheet, which is this sheet right in here. And as you can see here, I ran this once before, but what you can do here simply is run it again. Uh, under processing, there is a calculate plan option. When you plan something, you can plan it for just production, sales, service, job, or assembly. Obviously, all these modules are different areas of Business Central. In my case, I want to plan sales demand. So on here, I'm just going to sales demand and hit calculate plan, and everything gets recomputed based on that. Now, in my particular case, I could have some items that need to be purchased, as you can see here on the replenishment system, some items that need to be assembled, and some items that need to be produced. In my case, this didn't come up with anything because in my production planning, I've already created a firmly planned production order for those five units which you see over here, the system would generate this automatically. And when I ran the order planning worksheet, this document would be created. Now, in this case, it created five units. It's creating this item and it can tell me for this particular line item, some of the line item specific information, like what are the routing steps this item needs to go through. In this particular case, it needs to go through work center one, two, and three and it has setup times and run times and what have you for each work center. In addition to that, I can go under the line and see my component or raw material requirements. In this case here, I can see that I need raw material 1,000, 2, and 3, and how many units of each I require. 
Right now you can see I have a flushing method of manual indicated if you want to do a forward flush or back flush or manual flush, all of these three flushing methods are supported. Now, once you have a transaction uh, recorded in here, you can schedule start time and end time and you can do that uh, in here directly. Uh, the software, of course, interfaces with other options like a shop flow control module, which would give you a web-based interface to run this off against an actual shop floor environment where you can use scanners to scan in and out of these work steps and update your consumption journal and your production, the output journal as well. In this case here, I've created a firmly planned production order. I would then transfer that to become uh, released production order. So if I change the status on this firmly planned production order, I can go in here and release it and release it as of a specific date and that would then move it into released uh, status. Once it is uh, released, I can start recording consumption journals and output journals against this released production order. When I'm finished with the process, I can finish the uh, production order using the change status one more time to move it to finished. Once a production order is finished, it will be in a separate screen called the finished production orders and you can see all of your old production orders in that system as well. Also talking about the system itself, there's a capacity planning option in here as well. And capacity planning of course deal with each work center individually and each work center individually can be assigned to different shop calendar codes. So you can run a single shift, multi-shift, you know, type of operations. And as you assign work centers, you assign them to these shop calendar codes and they will drive the capacity planning as part of that process. So that's an optional configuration. That's not necessary if you don't want to use that part of the system, but you certainly can. The other part of the software that it can interface with is the warehouse management solution. And that is if you use multiple bins and you want to do picks and putaways and things of that nature in the, in the manufacturing interface, the warehouse management part of the solution, you can do both of those module implementations at the same time as well. We talked about the various uh, production orders already in the live system here. You can see that we have also simulated production orders and going through the different phases of the planned, firmly planned and released production orders here as well. So overall, this is kind of an introduction to the manufacturing module. Uh, as you can see here, it is a pretty broad and solid manufacturing module that can handle both discrete and process manufacturing organizations. We'd love the opportunity to meet with you and take you through a demo for your organization and hopefully convince you that this is a great solution for you and your organization. Obviously, Microsoft Dynamics 365 interfaces with all of the Microsoft products, such as Office 365, Power BI, Power Apps, and a number of other uh, Microsoft products that are available that the system can interface with. Um, please feel free to reach out to us. We are available for you Monday through Friday, and our contact information is below. Have a great day. Take care.